Hello, and welcome to part one of FEC TV's Education Special. I'm Chris Bennett, medieval historian and ex-teacher. I've got Jay Kelly. Jay Kelly, historian, economist, and man about town. I've got Barry Murphy. Um, completely uneducated after the age of 14 years of age, for better or for worse. And we also have a special guest uh, with us today, Ema Hassett. I am a media and English graduate, and I'm just fresh out of college. Okay, I'm going to kick things off. Secondary schools are slaughterhouses for the mind. Jay, explain that for us. Slaughterhouse for the mind and abattoir for the intellect, basically. I'm going to answer you with the question. How many people that you talk to will say that most of the time that they were in school was a waste of time, that it was of no relevance to them, that they didn't learn anything that has valued them in the future? Um, what I found, and what I think a lot of my friends have found, is that in terms of creativity, in terms of teaching initiative, proactivity, and giving skills that are valuable outside of cramming information into your head that you're then going to forget about, it was of no real value. Okay, so if I'm going to cut into that, I'd say, uh, you know, are, are we talking <coughs> about what subjects people are actually learning here? Are we talking about subjects, is it choice or is it imposition? Ema, what's your thoughts? Um, I think there's been a lot of attention in the media lately that there should be more choice in what people study in secondary school, but I, don't, I personally don't think that there should. Um, we're dealing with children here, in the, essentially, you know, they're 12 year olds at 13. So you're saying that they, they're not really fully equipped at that stage to choose what they want to do? Yeah, I mean, most kids don't even know what kind of music they prefer, let alone what they're going to choose to do for the rest just of their lives. Just the obviously. Well, <laughs> and I just think that maybe if they did have the choice, that would just give them, they would probably end up blaming themselves rather than blaming the system, which is what they're doing now. So if I want to jump in on that, I think you're, you're, you're pretty much taking Michael Gove, who is a bit of a wanker, uh, his point of view that basically he wants to take UK education, certainly, um, back to the five core subjects, back to reading, writing and arithmetic, that kind of thing, imposing maths, English, a science, a language on people, but forgetting, you know, design and technology, arts, the creative side. You know, Barry, do you have an opinion on this, please? Um, yeah, I, thi I think that, uh, you know, it's one thing to impose ma maybe maths and English up to a level of maybe f 14, 15 years of age, but they're the only two subjects that should be imposed um, because, they're, you know, you need them. You need them in life to be able to read properly. I wish I had have learned, would have learned more. Um, but outside of that, I think everything else should be left wide open. I mean, Emer, you were saying there that, you know, a 13 people don't know what they want. A 13-year-old came to me the other day and said to me, why don't we develop an app to teach people how to develop apps? I think we're restricting the creativity, mm. the free-flowing of these young people's minds. Jay, you seem to agree. Do you want to come in on this? I do, actually. I think that's a very good point. If you look at it from a point of view that we do need these couple of core mm. subjects, yeah? Uh, you do need to be able to, to write you do need to be, to be able to add things up properly. Sure. But at a certain point, I think a lot of us learn things that they're just never going to be of full relevance. I mean, uh, there were all these symbols that I learned when I was in school, you know, in, um, in maths, you know, that I, I can't even remember what they were or what they do. But I think it would be a good idea as early as possible to give exposure to different things that would be relevant. Let's say, you know, deeper IT skills. And considering that that's something that everybody needs and everybody and certainly as you grow up you're more likely to be into because you're going to be playing computer games all this kind of thing that would be valuable and by the the age of 18 you could have very real business skills built up and have and I'm even have a, a very good in, idea i'm yeah? going to jump in here i'm going to jump here so what what you're essentially <coughs> saying really is that schools should almost be training grounds for for jobs uh, for skills that you're going to use in jobs no, as you, they no. go on that's not okay. no no please, no no that's not what I'm saying. I, I i do think that certainly it'll have that kind of an impact uh and would be very valuable that way but what i do think especially is that it should provide access to a lot of different things. And I also do think that certain things should be forced on the students as well. Languages, for example. I think that maybe, uh, you know, learning French, German, Italian, Chinese... Barry, you're even. shaking your head. Come on in. That, that should be forced shake, a little bit more. You're shaking your head, Barry. Come on in. I think um, maths and English, as I said, to a point where they're, where they're sort of an, effic uh, an efficient level. But after that, I think the best person to ask what they want to do and study do with their study time after that is the child. 
But the well, that's 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 Hang on a second. No, that no, just no, jumps, no. But they're not stupid. Let me stupid. just cut you off, Barry. Let me just cut you off. That jumps back to Emma's point here about do you, about believing whether the child is actually ready at that stage yeah, I mean, to make I, those decisions. When I was younger, I wanted to be a teacher, and now that can be further from the truth. I, I don't want to be a teacher. I want to get in the media. I want to write things people will read. I mean, Barry, like, I, I'm not sure exactly what age you are, but I mean, you can say that you've had many different careers throughout your life, mm -hmm. and I don't think that you know they should be forced to maybe kind of pick certain subjects. That's exactly yeah. the point. I have had many different careers. I've gone, and I, but I was interested in them all. And I went and did what I wanted, and I did it to the best of my ability. I think it goes back to the point that you got, you know, you'll, you'll have people in school saying, you know, I want to be a professional footballer. I want to be, you know, a, a fireman or something. That changes two, three years down the line, and they think, right, I want to go into medicine. And or then they should change again. Well, being a professional footballer again? is a bullshit idea anyway but if for you're most of them. But, but what we're saying is if you're imposing only a certain amount of a certain amount of subjects on them, maths, yeah. maths and English, mm -hmm. and restricting the rest, which is what you're saying, you know, the imposition at least gives them that broad base for where they can go further on with it. You know, we're talking about relevance here, relevance mm -hmm. of subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you I do think Jay made a good point. What? Well, that's it. I mean, I would argue that Sorry. every <laughs> subject has relevance. I'd, I'd certainly argue that every subject out there has relevance Absolutely. in some way to something that you will do later in life. I mean, even it can have relevance, but yeah, um, but there's. I yeah. think Jay made a point that there should be maybe more subjects that they should bring in yeah. technology. They should bring in, you know, more creativity, Correct. not just art as Correct. creativity or home yeah. ec. You know, there should Correct. be more choice. One yeah. would argue, and though. languages as well. Um, look at it from the point of view that there are some people who they may turn out to have a great aptitude or a great talent for languages if those aren't offered, if there isn't the access. So let's say you take a, a kid at 14. By 14, they'll probably be able to read and write well enough. They'll be able to add and subtract well enough to function in society. That's the point maybe at which you should like open it up a little bit, offer more and more subjects, see what they have an aptitude for. And the only way you'll know that is by giving them some decent bit of exposure to it. But that's that, that's the choice. They but need that to have those options on the table. At a certain point, but yeah. certain still point. maintain a certain amount of uh, four subjects that the society itself are going to need. You yeah. know what the only thing that's relevant? It's relevant to the individual student who is a person. A person, yeah. Who's, Not who's relevant to what you think, or what I think, or what a teacher mm. thinks, or what a, t a system thinks. It's relevant to the student, the person themselves. And they should be able to choose from a much wider range and be much more creative. And if they do two years of um, text, or whatever, it doesn't matter, and they want to change, let them change. Why not let them change? Let them change as they want. They'll find their feet and they'll be in their natural, mm. individual self, which is something that the whole education system is missing. I'd, 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 I'd semi-agree with you. I'd semi-agree <laughs> with you. So you're not doing bad there. I'd semi-agree with you on that one. I, I'd probably come in and say here that the, the imposition itself of subjects allows that choice to blossom down the line. So the fact is, from my own experience, you know, I, d I hated maths, I, I hated science, not a clue. But the fact that they were imposed on me, the fact that I had to learn them, later down the line, I've come back to those subjects in my later life and have found that actually the base skills are there. I can then improve upon them later on. If those subjects, and I know you did mention maths as one that should be imposed, but if those subjects weren't imposed on me in the first place, that baseline would never be there in, you know, to, to, to build on. But you'd pick it up much quicker now. I mean, if you guys suddenly struck up an interest in some science, what you, what you spent hours and hours as a child learning in your teenage years... Not true. Completely well, untrue. Completely untrue. The, we the beg to differ. Uh, we can beg to differ, and that's the whole, the whole purpose of the show. But the whole thing is that, that children, especially young children, that's, that's the time when your brain is a sponge. That's the time when you can soak up this information. That's the time to put it into people. Because later on in life, coming back for things like languages, uh, you know, other things like that, it's far, far harder to pick it up later in life. For most people, that's a generalization, but for most people it's harder to pick it that's up. That's absolutely true, but the, the other counterbalance to it is in terms of a developmental issue. By the time you're getting to 13, 14, 15, I think it becomes much more important to start giving people the choice or giving people the options then because that's the, just emotionally, that's when you're going to be more rebellious. That's when you're starting to find yourself. And if you can have the education system make the most of that as well, which it doesn't at all right now, you still end up studying like the same crap through till you're 18. Okay, so I'm going to come know? in. I'm going to come in here. We're talking about the education Sorry. system as a whole. Mm -hmm. One of the main arguments for it is, is the exam system, the way the schools are set up. 
that it's this sort of a, a factory you know, process line, that it's all about the exams, that it's about not teaching people the actual skills, which is what you guys are really arguing for, mm -hmm. but actually you know, backing them up on that side of things. You know, so wh wh who are exams for? And what purpose do they actually serve? I'm going to come to Ema first because she hasn't talked very much. I'll bring you in. Um, I don't know. I would be of the opinion that exams are important. I mean, if you spend all year round studying some, something and you can't prove it. But I do think that the way that we are tested in just some sort of written exam rather than maybe orally or kind of more practically just should be brought more into it, aside from subjects like um, woodwork and all that. So you're knocking, knocking wood right on the head. Well, yeah. I think there's another side to this as well. Um, in terms of exams, you can, you, can learn very, you can learn the minimum about a subject, even a language, whatever, but you can learn very good exam skills. And I can remember um, uh, a guy that I was in school with. He left us in sixth year and he went to a grind school. So a grind school being one of these places where they focus absolutely on the exams, the exam system, and just figuring out what's going to come up on the paper and what exactly is the, the right answer to that. Now yeah. that's something you, can, you, could, you could pass some Leaving Cert subjects anyway with you know, three months or three weeks of work on that oh, basis. Yeah. And I remember this guy, the point system here in Ireland, you know, the max is 600 points you can get. He got, I think, 405 points, and he even said himself that if he hadn't gone along to this particular um, style of education, he would have got five points instead of 405. And when you, th the very existence of these places, which as well are based around the money that the parents have to throw into it, um, it can take somebody who has no particular creativity, no real gifts, but they'll still come out with very good results on an exam basis, mm. um, which it, it, they reflect nothing. It's not a preparation for no, the life. It's a, it, no, so it's not. And I'm I mean, once they leave the grind school, they're, they're pretty absolutely. fucked after that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to jump in a little bit here, and I'm going to I'm going to switch it up because Barry had this fantastic uh, thing that he wanted to talk about here, which was school holidays. As part of the education system, are they too long? There are school holidays too long. Um, well, when you look at uh, teenage years, I don't think the holidays themselves are themselves are too long. Um, there's nothing wrong with in your teen years having three months off. It's what happens with those three months. I'm not suggesting for one minute that we should have an extra. Um, two months of education and of one month's holidays, but I do think that um, our education system um, should, like, okay, so you've got families here that have money, they send their children off to holiday camps and all the rest of it, and you've got families that don't. And so, so a lot of the families that don't, you've two parents working, you've got 14 or 15 year old kids um, left to their own devices throughout three months of the summer, and I don't think that's good. Therefore, I think that the teachers and the whole system that um, they should be working for at least another six weeks, but not in, the educa in an educational way. In other words... So what kind of way would you actually want them to be working? In, in a fun way. I mean, so that, so that up to 14 or 15 years the of age, these t uh, teachers are... Um, uh, sorry, these children are supervised. OK, Ema, come on on this. I, I completely disagree. I think there's one time in your life where you're going to have holidays and you should be allowed to be at home. And I think... The kind of the greater issue there is more so town versus country to say because I was brought up no I was brought up in the country and I you know, probably I had great summers at home hanging sure. around all that but you're talking about the kids who are stuck in the town who well end up going if around. If you were at home on the farm, well, let's say you came from a farm, right? You were holding the f and and supposing um, that there was nobody else there, that like your parents had to work outside the farm or whatever. You, you know, it, uh, you can't. Like, it's wrong. There's so many children all summer long children as in under 15 years of age on their own after 15 they tend to get summer jobs and things but up to 15 years of age they're on their own and they're hanging around the place doing nothing no you know p kids need to be active. So what you'd like to see more so is something put in place for these children either a sports camp a further education in summer school or oh, some, form of, some, education some form of vocation. Well I'll <laughs> tell you some what they actually vacation. are doing to be fair Barry uh, they're getting themselves ready for their appearances on Jeremy Kyle you know so um, okay. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe some sort of um, some, some, something of to school. occupy the mind. Yeah, occupy the yeah. Mind. So, so we've talked quite a lot uh, about education so far, and we've we've said a lot about how we think certain, par certain parts of the system are wrong, certain parts need correcting, a few things about you know exams and things. What I'd like to know is where are you going to go with how are you going to solve this? Where are we going to go? And I'd like to bring in one example here: Finland, top of the education league tables. They have one mandatory test for the entire time they're at secondary school. 
93% of them graduate. All their teachers have master's degrees. They take the top 10% to teach these people. They have the least number of class hours a week of anywhere in the developed world. And the schools have full autonomy to control the content, to control what they want. That's the model. How are we going to get there? Jay, final thought. Final thought, well, uh, I'm glad you gave me an easy question on the Absolutely. final thought anyway. Um, well, you're the man for much, the job. Much, uh, much appreciated. To be honest with you, I don't think we're going to get there. Now, the only way that it would happen is that the Irish education system, for example, which is very much ticking over at the moment, that it gets to some sort of a point of crisis, that whatever it is, whatever sparks it off, there will be some sort of movement. I don't see it happening. Being totally honest with you, but uh, down in bureaucracy. Absolutely, this is it. If you, I mean, there's so many other issues that we don't have time to actually touch on here. Sure. But it is absolutely entrenched at this stage. I think the best thing that you could do is, as a parent, to try and take as much control of your child's education as possible. Obviously, and I don't just mean selecting the school, but I also mean in terms of outside of school and sure. over the holidays. That's when you that's when you make an impact on them and try and give them Absolutely. the exposure. I think it's, it, it will come down to personal productivity on the parents. Lovely stuff. This was part one of our education special. Check it out on FEC TV. Parts two and three coming up soon. Thank you.